Good morning, and welcome to another Bible study here at Hurricane Baptist Church. As we continue our study on judging. Uh, we've been on this about, uh, this will be about our fifth, fifth little lesson, if you would. So, over in, in Matthew chapter 7, and we're looking at verses 1 to 6. So, we went through the first three verses. So, let's kind of back up and just a little uh, review. Verse, uh, chapter 7, verse 1. Judge not that ye be not judged. Okay, so talking about being critical and judging others here now. It says, For with what judgment ye judge, ye shall be judged, and with what measure ye met, it shall be measured to you again. So, again, we want to be compassionate, we want to be understanding, we want to be uh, striving to lift the person up that we're going to talk about. And then it says, Why beholdest thou uh, the mote in thy brother's eye, but considerest not the beam in thine own eye? And uh, again, we've talked about the little self examination, right? looking at myself and see who I am. So as I've just been uh, looking and studying over this a little bit, I, I, uh, but we'll go to verse 4. Oh, how wilt thou say to thy brother, let me pull out the mote of, out of thine eye, and behold, a beam is in thine own eye. And, and uh, I think as we really stop and, and be realistic about it, when I, if I'm going to be critical about a brother, at, at something that they're doing, um, or I perceive that they're doing, um, I, I see him as having the beam and me having the moat. You know, most people, if you could, you say anything to them, yeah, yeah, you know, they, they admit they're a sinner. They understand that they don't do everything right, that they're a sinner. But, you know, uh, uh, sometimes we look at the other person and say, well, you, but th their sin is greater than mine. And so they we have this kind of a measurement. We talked about that thing in verse 2. So the idea is that we look and we make judgments right away about how serious the sin is. And again, we look at ourselves like ours isn't that bad. So um, when it comes time to uh, judging others, you know, and again, it gets back, to referring back to verse 3, um, how, how am I standing? You know, do, do, you, do you ever just stop and, and look at your own life? Not, not talk about looking at somebody else and trying to judge and see, compare, which is the worst uh, sinner, which one's doing the worst in their walk as a Christian. But just look at your own life. And say, you know, uh, judge, just judge yourself. He talks about that over in First uh, Corinthians chapter 11, uh, chapter eleven, yeah. And he says, you know, examine yourself or judge yourself. Then, if you judge yourself, examine yourself, then I won't have to judge. Is what the Lord says there. And so the idea is that we we need to sometimes just uh, just step back and take a look at ourselves and, and be real with ourselves. You know, every one of us has things in our life that we can need to, to adjust or work with or overcome or re turn from, repent. So as we see here, he says, you're looking at your brother. He says, I'm, I'm going to get that uh, uh, moat out of your eye. There's a little speck. You're not doing something right. I'm, I'm, you've been critical by something you're doing. And he says, and you uh, behold, there's a beam in thine own eye. So it's, again, why are, we, why are we judging this other person? What is, what is our motive? Uh, over in uh, Romans 14, 4 says this, Who art thou that judges another man's servant? To his own servant he standeth or falleth. Yea, he shall be holding up, for God is able to make him stand. So he's standing right there. Uh, Paul's writing to the church of Rome. He says, who are you to judge God's servant? We're, we're all servants of the Lord. If you're born again, you're a servant of God. So who are you to judge? And it's not saying that we don't ever uh, look at someone and we try to uh, bring them back. But, you know, I like the, uh, the attitude and the approach some people use, and I've heard it used before. It says, you know, I don't want to make you mad, but... And so then they come ahead with the critical comments and that. And so right away you know that there's a, uh, they're expecting a little confrontation uh, from their criticism. I mean, there's a way to, uh, to approach the things, of course, in a biblical way. And then in a biblical way would be what? First of all, I want, to, I want the brother to be restored. Uh, whether he's, what he's doing, I don't know. There's, there's uh, you know, we talk about sin and degrees of sin. There's, there's a, a degree of sin, if you would. Some sins are more, uh, uh, what I want to say, uh, affect more people in adverse ways, you know, the, yeah, just like he talks about the idea of adultery, Jesus is talking about it. He says, uh, thou shalt not commit adultery. He said, but I'm saying to you, if you even look at a woman with lust, you're committing adultery in your heart. Well, if you commit your adultery in your heart, it doesn't have near the effects as if you do it overtly. All right, so there's a, there's a difference there in, in that sin and how it's acted out. And you can go ahead and talk about all the consequences of even doing it in your heart and that problem. But just to, as a point of illustration, uh, the, the degree of severity as it affects other people. And again, when we talk about judging other people, we look at that, that uh, moat. Is that a little compared to what he's saying there is actually compared to you, your brother's got a moat. Now, you might consider it a beam, 
And God is here. He's actually what he's actually addressing here in these verses. Who he's addressing the critical spirit. He's not addressing the one that has the moat in their eye. The one that's doing some sinning because we've all sinned. We all are sinners, and we're all are doing acting out sin in our life at one degree or another. So the idea is we're going to look at how we're, how we're doing, and then we try to bring our brother up. If we have a brother that's backslidden or, or drifted away, what we want to do is bring them back. We don't want to push them away, and so we have to be careful then how we uh, confront them. We want to do it in a way that's uh, compassionate. Uh, over in James uh, 3, I got it here uh, in verses uh, 1 and 2, it says this, He said, My brethren, be not many masters, knowing that we shall receive the greater condemnation, for in many things we offend all, if any man offend not in word, the same is a perfect man, and able also to bridle the whole body or control the whole body. But he's telling, sorry, he says, you know, if you're taking a position of responsibility, he talks about masters being a teacher. So you take that you have a greater responsibility. So when it comes time to being critical and judging others, we need to be careful, don't we? Be careful of the motive. Be sure that we have the right motive, that we're trying to do something to better the body of Christ, not to tear it down. We're doing something to bring that, uh, that uh, brother up, to edify them, to get them back to where they need to be, to get in right fellowship with the Lord if they're drifted away and they're living in sin, whether it be living out a lie or adultery or whatever their sin is, uh, that's causing a, a bridge into fellowship they have with the Lord. So we're trying to bring them back. And so the idea is we deal with them. We want to come with the right idea. And we want to be sure that we're judging the sin, okay? We look at the sin and we try to bring that brother out of the sin. We try to bring that brother to, to in fact, what we're trying to do is get that brother to what? To examine themselves. You know, brother, you say, look, just look at what we're doing. This, look where you're at. And here's what we need maybe to do to help you get past this. And it's always with the attitude, again, of bringing them back, the idea of helping, not, not condemning, we don't need to be condemning because, we, listen, we don't know the heart. We talked about that earlier. We don't understand all the reasons somebody's doing something. That, but we can see that we can see the, the effects of what the cause. We can see the effect brought out in their sin. And so we look at the sin and we see that the sin is wrong. We judge sin. Adultery is sin. Fornication is sin. Abortion is sin. We look at those things and we know that's sin. What the person is doing, why they're doing it, we don't know. But the idea is we want to bring them back to get rid of that sin. Not to allow them to stay in that sin. We're doing it all again for the for the body of Christ. And so we want to be sure that we're not uh, uh, overstepping our bounds. We don't want to be a, 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 a try to be a God, play, play God, be a judge. Because, you know, there's a, there's a day coming. Right, and it's, it's over in 2 Corinthians 5.10. He talks about, he says, we're all going to stand before the beam of seat of Christ. All right, and uh, that brother that's got the mote in his eye or the beam in his eye or whatever it is, you're going to stand there and your sin is going to be judged. How you lived your life as a Christian is going to be judged. The sin as a sin is not judged, but what it is is how I, how I dealt with those things in my life. And so we're all going to stand there. So the idea is we want to stand there together. We want to be able to stand there and, and come across to the Lord that we've done our part to help the body of Christ, not to damage it, not to tear it down, not to drive a brother away, not to make me feel good about myself. I, I, look at me, I'm not near as bad as he is, like the Pharisee and the tax collector. The Pharisee looked, said, look, look, God, look at him. Look what he is, you know, and I'm not like that. I fast and I tithe and I do all these things. And the tax collector, he couldn't even look up. He said, beat his breast and said, you know, I, I'm a sinner. He recognized who he was. I'm not worthy. And so we all are there. We're not worthy. But by the grace of God, we're born into the family of God. So we want to do what we can to help the body. All right. So if you don't know Christ as your Savior, just let this be the day. And, you know, you, you need to look at your life and you recognize that you're a sinner. Uh, the word sin means that you've missed the mark. God has a, a certain way He wants us to live. He has rules and commandments, and He has ways He wants us. So when I don't do that, I'm missing the mark. I'm sinning. So what He wants me to do, He wants me to turn to Him. When I turn to Him, I turn away from the sin. I turn to God, and knowing I'm a sinner, I put my faith and trust in the shed blood of the Lord Jesus Christ as payment for my sin. And then He forgives my sin. I'm clothed in the righteousness of Christ, and I have eternal life. It's that simple. Just recognizing that you are the sinner, you need to be saved. And once we're saved, once we're born again, we're still sinners, saved by grace, but we strive to sin less. And that's why it's so important we have a right testimony. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, we do just thank you for this day and for this time. We pray you would be with each one of us. 
as Christians, as we walk this way of life, we pray you would touch us and help us to live the kind of life that would uh, lead others to Christ. And we would be a, a edifier, a builder up of other believers, Father. And for those that don't know Christ, really, Lord, we pray this would be the day that you would truly touch, touch them, draw them that they might come to know Jesus before it's too late. We thank you for who you are and what you've done, looking to the future and thanking you for what you're going to do. For we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.